Here's how our solar system looked in 1600 BC, in 1524, 16, 6, 17, 42, 1934, and today. The only problem is, none of these models are accurate. We've been looking up at the stars and wondering about our place among them for about as long as we've been around. Look at the stars. But even today, with our monumental advancements in space technology and optics, it's almost impossible for us to grasp just how vast, how cosmically enormous our universe really is. So just how big is our universe? And is there a way for our tiny eight brains to truly understand the vastness of space? I wanted to find out. So I've read some books, talked to some smart people, and hit the road. Because once you appreciate how small you are on a cosmic scale, that misspelt name, that unreturned phone call, that show cancellation, it all fades into triviality as you realize that none of it really matters in the grand scheme of things. Darling. If you look up a picture of the Earth and our Moon, you typically get a picture like this, where the Moon and the Earth are shown quite close together. But in reality, our Moon orbits the Earth at a distance of 384,000 kilometers. Something more like... this. In fact, you could fit every single planet in our solar system in the distance between the Earth and our Moon. If we zoom out even further and take a look at our solar system, this distortion becomes even greater it becomes literally impossible to find an image that even comes close to representing our solar system to scale. And the reason for this is simple. If you were to map out our solar system on an A3 piece of paper, the planets would become microscopic. It would be impossible to even see them. And this is the fundamental problem with trying to accurately represent the scale of our solar system. It's simply too big. So, let's try and get a little bit of perspective. Three, two, one. This is the reason I came to this frozen tundra. This is the Ericsson Globe. The stadium started construction in 1986, took two years to complete, and broke its record attendance of 16,531 in 1998, when the Spice Girls came to Stockholm. It also happens to be the largest hemispherical building on Earth, with a diameter of 110 meters, and also plays the role of the sun in the largest scale model solar system on the planet. The project was the brainchild of Nils Brenning and Costa Gram, and has been slowly growing year by year since 1998. I went to visit Professor Nils in his office at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology, a university in Stockholm's north. I, I am Nils Brenning. I am professor in plasma physics. Okay, before we get into this, a little bit of background on the Swedish solar system. The solar system, much like our P-scale solar system, takes the diameters of the Ericsson globe and compares it to our sun. It then crunches the numbers and scales the planets and their distances accordingly. The planets of the inner solar system can all be found within Stockholm. For the outer planets though, well, you have to travel outside of the capital. Here we find Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune, Uranus. To find Pluto, you have to travel a staggering 300 kilometers from the Ericsson Dome to the quaint little town of Delsbo. And compared to the Ericsson Dome, Pluto is about the size of a shot put ball. Okay, back to Nils. It's a, it's a, it came up as a pedagogical project for, I was talking to my own kids at school and was thinking about models uh, of, of solar system to explain the distances. And then it, it struck me that the, the difficult thing is to make the sun. It's so much bigger than the planets and everything, so it's, it's difficult to afford. 
And then uh, it struck me that we could use the already built globe. At the same time, when we developed this, me and just Dagon, uh, we have done this together, we, we realized that all the planets are associated with culture, history, mythology. So one can, at the same time, we tried to find connections between the planets, the location they are, and some mythological event to, to, to broaden this into just, not just science, but also human science. The thing was to find where the planets would be. And actually what I did, and this is not something I told many, but I took out the map of Stockholm and I realized that uh, I would have to move around in various directions to see that where they would fit. So I took a rubber band and I marked the planets on it. So I could stretch and contract the rubber band and move it around. <laughs> and then I found that, okay, this is a good fit. Here I can get the subway stations exactly at the first inner planets. Mm. And uh, they would be each their own subway station. Then I checked and it was a good scale. It's true, conveniently and quite coincidentally, the distances from the Ericsson Dome and the inner planets line up almost perfectly with the city's metro stations. And so with that, I wish Nils an Ajo. That is definitely not pronounced correctly. Uh, yeah. Got an O card and hit the rails on a voyage through our inner solar system. The Ericsson Dome is located in the southern district of Johanneshof and was obviously the first stop on our interplanetary day trip. All right, hello and welcome to the center of our solar system. As you can see behind me, that is the Ericsson Globe and it's going to be representing our sun on this cosmic voyage. And although this building may be millions and millions of times smaller than the actual sun, don't let that take away from how amazing this building actually is. This is the largest spherical building in the entire world. From there, it's a short trip from Globen Station to Slusen, where the Stockholm City Museum was closed. Admittedly, not a great start to our interplanetary voyage. Luckily for me, Nils gave me a great description of the model before I left. And the particular thing about Mercury is that it's very hot. And there is a place in Mercury where you actually can melt lead when it's facing the sun. Uh, and the artist then, uh, Peter Vaheli, he designed a globe of copper with uh, signs on them that would symbolize historically and mythologically Mercury, and he also had it heated. So it, it's standing there at the, at the city museum and in the winter time uh, the snow melts on it and often you can see kids taking off their gloves and standing with their hands on mercury. So that's the first one. Oh, I'm sure it would have been awesome, Mills. Anyway, we're 2.9 kilometers away from the globe. Moving on. Then we have Venus and that is actually one of the reasons I, 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 I got enthusiastic about this project. It is here at this school, uh, uh, Royal Institute of Technology. I visited the second warmest planet in our solar system in the middle of March, meaning it was freezing cold and it was covered in snow. But a quick wipe down confirmed that we had made contact. <sighs> All right, we are now at the House of Science in Stockholm and right behind me, just over there, is Venus. We're now 5.5 kilometers away from uh, the Ericsson globe and uh, yeah, still cold. Back on the T-Barna, another 12 minutes and we're at the Natural History Museum. All right, so we've now arrived at the Natural History and Space Museum here in Stockholm. Planet Earth is inside there along with the moon. We are now 7.6 kilometers away from the Ericsson dome. Next stop, Mars. Mars, uh, the red planet, uh, symbolizing war and other things in mythology, that is the end of the habitable planets or the small planets, the inner planets, and that's also the end of the subway line you took here. That's in Murby Central. Okay, the sun is coming down and we have just reached the outer limits of the inner solar system with the fourth of the rocky planets, Mars, being held in that building right behind me. We're now 11.6 kilometers away from the Ericsson globe. And no, I have no idea why it's housed in a shopping center. <sighs> from here, the outer solar system spans the entire length of Sweden. It's an incredible piece of science communication, and for me anyway, 
the most visceral way I've ever understood the true scale of our solar system. And as overwhelmingly big as this may seem, it's nothing compared to the rest of the universe. This is meant to give you an impression of the scale of the, uh, of the universe. And what gave me the strongest impression of the scale is that you say, okay, you, we go on, we have the moon, we have the planets, distant planets, comets, and we are stay, staying within Sweden. So that gives a feeling. Okay, what if we would include the nearest star? And that would be out in space. That, that's, so you, you have this tremendous shrinking of the scale and the nearest star would be out in space. That sort of puts you on the map. <laughs> we are very small in a very big universe. Our closest star other than our sun, Alpha Centauri, is 4.37 light years away. On our Swedish solar system scale, there's literally nowhere on Earth that is far enough away from the globe to accurately place this since it would be more than 300,000 kilometers away, with nothing, nothing between them. Mm, it's incomprehensible on a much grander scale than anything else, yes. It's really big. Our solar system is massive, and our universe even more so. And yet, on this tiny rock, floating in the vast, vast emptiness of space are people. People who have looked up at the sky and tried to understand our place in that vast emptiness. And when you think about that, about how vast the universe is and how unique it is that life has developed on this planet, it makes you appreciate how special our planet really is and how important it is to keep it whole, clean and safe.